What up, Flockers? In this video, we're gonna review the Crimson Rosella Parrot, which is an absolute amazing parrot and one of the coolest birds you'll ever see because of its iconic red coloration. Now, as you can see here, these crimsons are not actually red. Something cool about the Crimson Rosellas is there's all kinds of mutations, even more than just the two I have here on my shoulder. There's like pastel blue colors, there's these really cool yellow ones, there's like silver colored crimson rosellas. I mean, there are so many cool mutations with rosellas. Like your options for these birds are endless, which makes them so cool to have. Breeders have actually bred out really cool mutations with the crimson rosellas. So what we have here is a blue crimson rosella, and then this is a green crimson rosella. And as you can see, they have such striking colors to them. I mean, you look at the blue one and it has that really cool texture with a really deep blue throat. And then just the rest of the body, such a cool blue color with like a sky blue head. I mean, I personally love the blue mutations. I mean, they are so cool. But then you also have the insanely cool green mutation. So it has this really cool light forest green color to it, which is really unique. On top of that, it also has a crimson head to it. So you still get that crimson name to this kind of green mutation, which is so cool. And then there's a little bit of blue with like a blue throat to it and like blue wings. The green mutation is really, really cool because the colors are just all over the place. It's literally all the primary colors of light, you know, red, green, and blue. I mean, that's really cool to see in a parrot and it's natural, but that's still nothing to scoff at at the original original normal crimson rosellas which are a vibrant red color i mean it is the most red bird you can possibly imagine next to something like an eclectus and then it has the blue throat and the amazing blue wings to them and i really am a huge fan of the texture they have on their wings that pattern right there is so unique to rosellas that it just makes them such an interesting unique bird and that's just the thing about these birds because of their really insane vibrant colors these birds are really popular aviary birds where people keep them as show birds outside or even inside because they're such cool birds you definitely want to show this bird off to your friends and family now these rare colored rosellas come to us from omar's exotic birds which is my go-to pet store here in southern california and in my opinion they're one of the few stores that actually do birds right leaving them out in the open like a petting zoo letting people interact and helping the birds learn that humans and birds can get along as one flock now while they did not sponsor this video they were really kind enough to loan me these two birds for this review so for that guys thank you so much now these crimson rosellas come to us from the deep pits of australia from southeast australia and i mean if you haven't noticed with a lot of these bird reviews australia has some of the coolest parrots you can possibly imagine now these birds in captivity are going to live of about 15 to 30 years so they're definitely going to be a time commitment but about about average for these small medium-sized parrots now the interesting name about these rosella parrots is they actually come from rose hill where they were first discovered in new south wales and in fact they were originally called the rose hill parakeet but later that was turned into rosella and then it was later classified these birds are in fact not parakeets because their tails are actually broad tails as opposed to long tails. So they may be confused as parakeets, but they are in a different classification. Now the real question though is, are these parrots the right pet for you? And to break this down, we got our six categories, which are gonna be handleability, quietness, talking ability, care, hardiness, and upfront costs. Now if you find this video really valuable, please make sure you hit like for the YouTube algorithm especially if you want more and more people to learn about how amazing these crimson rosellas are now if you want to follow my journey of reviewing every single parrot in existence please make sure you hit the subscribe button to follow along now with that aside let's go ahead and get started so the first up is going to be handleability and for handleability I give the crimson rosella score of two out of five the thing about these birds is they're kind of a shy and frail bird and not very high on the food chain so unfortunately these 
these birds are very easy to spook and they're also very flighty. And on top of that, they're also very high energy birds. So you take a high energy bird and a very flighty personality, you can start to piece together why these birds are so popular for aviaries. Now these birds in the wild mainly dine on fruits and that's gonna lend to a lot of that high energy. So when you're keeping these birds, these birds are gonna be flying all over the place. I mean, they're very zippy, they're super inquisitive, they're gonna be just all over the place. But they're also not gonna be the cuddly type of parrot because they tend to be more shy and frail and they're more likely to try to fly away if you try to rough handle this bird. So when you handle these birds, you don't want to be grabby with them at all. Otherwise, that's gonna break a lot of the trust that you're gonna build with this bird. This bird, you're just gonna have to respect its personal space and you will be able to interact with this bird a lot. I mean, they are very friendly birds. They're gonna sit on your shoulder and they're gonna chill. They're gonna play around and be super inquisitive. But if you're looking more for a puppy bird, these birds aren't really for you. You're just gonna be able to interact with them when they want to be interacted with. But it's going to be very important that you do spend time with these birds. Because unfortunately, a lot of people will buy these birds and because they're so skittish, they don't spend enough time with them. And then the birds really do just revert into just being like a wild show bird. And then with that, it's gonna be really, really difficult to hand tame these birds. So when you get one, you definitely wanna to make sure it's hand raised and that you keep up with interaction constantly. Otherwise, this bird isn't really going to be a pet bird. And on top of that, they can eventually even develop a nippy personality and really just try to avoid you altogether. So you really don't want that with this bird. But if you work with these birds and you give them a lot of handling and attention and you build that trust with them, they actually can become really loyal companions and they can be a really fun parrots to own. But just keep Keep in mind, you're gonna have to work with these birds and skittish personalities can be a little demotivating. So you're gonna have to put a lot of self-discipline into working with these kind of parrots. Now next up on this list is gonna be quietness and for that, I give the Crimson Rosella score of three out of five. They're overall a pretty quiet bird, though they can have the occasional loud spurt, but the thing is, is they're really a low volume parrot. And especially if you have a male, they're probably gonna go more with like whistles and sounds that it picks up as opposed to loud screeching. And as such, these birds can actually be pretty decent birds if you live in an apartment setting. They have a very nice sound to them that in my opinion is actually pretty pleasing. And I think also why people like them for aviaries, they have a very bird sound to them as opposed to like a parrot squawking all the time and that's what's gonna make these really nice for apartments because it's gonna give your place a very nice bird ambiance to it and then just not being that loud you won't really have to worry about this bird bothering your neighbors which is gonna be perfect if you want that kind of a bird but then next up is gonna be talking ability and for talking ability I give the crimson rosella score of two out of five so they're not really talking birds and generally quiet birds are not talking birds that's just the general rule of thumb but if you get a male, these birds can actually pick up a decent amount of like whistles and sound effects, your microwave. They will pick up sound effects like that and they will talk a lot using those sounds. So if you are looking for a talking bird, this may not be the bird for you, but if you are fine with a really fun bird that's still gonna pick up some really cool sounds around your home, these birds are gonna be really fun to keep. But if you get a female, chances are they're not really gonna be talkative. So make sure you get a male if you do want a higher chance of some small talking phrases and such. And for those who do have a talking Rosella, their voices are generally a lot more scratchy. It's definitely not gonna be a clear voice at all, but it will be cute because it will pick up some sounds and some phrases and that's gonna be a really fun bird to have. Now next up on this list is gonna be Care. And for Care, I give this bird a score of three out of five. Now they're not a relatively difficult bird to take care of. The main component here is just going to be time. You're going to need regular interaction with these birds because otherwise they're going to revert into a skittish personality. And on top of that, they're very flock-minded birds. So as far as care, I strongly recommend that if you get this bird, it should be in a very active part of your home, probably a living room or something, because you really want to keep this bird constantly in a flock mentality that humans and birds are all together coexisting and that's going to be very important with these rosellas. 
Unless you are just going for an aviary and you don't really care about interacting with your bird, then in that case, sure, that's fine. But if you are looking for more of a pet bird, you gotta keep that interaction up and I can't stress that enough. But on top of that, these birds being very flighty birds, I would strongly recommend getting a big cage. Now generally, I always recommend you get the biggest cage you possibly can, and that's just the general rule of thumb of getting any pet pair. But especially with these birds, they definitely want that wing space. So I think with these birds, it's definitely gonna be a little more important than some other birds that you do get a larger cage. So if you are in an apartment setting where some birds you can get away with a smaller cage if you compensate with a lot of time outside of the cage I think these birds even more so you're definitely gonna want to invest in a larger cage and I would definitely say you definitely want a good amount of width so it can fly from side to side and just burn off that energy then aside from that you just give them a normal amount of toys as these birds are going to shred through toys like all parrots but even though they look like they have small beaks you'll be surprised they can actually go through a decent number of toys and shred them to pieces but you definitely want to put them on a pellet diet for that balanced diet that's very important but with these birds they also really prefer fruits as well so you definitely want to make sure that you get at least every other day you want some fresh fruits for these birds just to help them get that energy that they need to burn and stay healthy and on top of that you're definitely going to want to give them plenty of time outside of their cage to stretch their wings and really burn off that energy and interact with people because these guys they're going to be all over the place let it be known. <laughs> so next up on this list is going to be hardiness and for hardiness I give the Crimson Roselle score 3 out of 5. Now weather wise they are very hardy parrots and they're really good at acclimating to all kinds of weather situations. I mean that's largely one of the reasons why they're such popular aviary birds. But my main issue is they're about like a smallish medium-ish medium sized kind of parrot but they also have kind of those really weak like canary kind of feet and for that I am a little concerned about crushing and if you do have kids that are very rough handling you should definitely be very very careful when they're handling this bird as they are going to be prone to crushing and they can definitely get injured if they're getting rough handled too much now granted they are gonna be flying they're gonna try to escape any type of rough handling as quickly as possible but on the off chance it does happen you definitely want to keep your eye with this bird and also being a flighty bird you're going to want to make sure that you bird proof your home because this this bird, also being very inquisitive, is going to get itself in quite a bit of trouble around your house. So you want to make sure that your home is a safe environment for this kind of bird. Now next up on this list is going to be upfront costs. And for upfront costs, I give the Crimson Rosella score 3 out of 5. Now they're decently available parrots, and that's largely because they're very popular for aviaries. And as such, you can actually find these birds in bulk for really cheap costs. But those are not the birds you're going to want to be buying is if you're watching my content you're probably looking more for birds for pets and for that these birds are going to be decently priced really depending on the mutations that you're getting now if you get a normal bright $500 give or take which is actually pretty affordable for a parrot and about where you'll find a lot of parrots costing around but if you start to get into more of these mutations like the blues and greens the cost is going to go up from there and they're going to go up to a whopping $1,000 so if you do want that premium mutation you're definitely going to have to shell out at least double the money that you're normally paying for for a normal crimson rosella and they can definitely go up there because these are just a couple of the mutations but there's all kinds of mutation for rosellas which is partly what makes them so cool but in my personal opinion out of all the colors i still like just the stock crimson rosella look because there's not many just vivid red parrots in the parrot world and i think that that's just so unique and such a cool color now aside from choosing your color of crimson rosella you want to get you're also going to have your cage and you definitely want to get a large cage with the right bar spacing that's going to cost you probably a few hundred dollars cost you probably a few hundred dollars because you definitely want a larger cage with these birds to give them room to fly around but then aside from that just getting them the normal toys that you need for any parrot as well as investing into some pellets which for me i like harrisons the actual care for this bird aside from the bird itself is going to be just about normal for any other parrot so it's not going to be anything too crazy but you're definitely going to have to upkeep the costs in that these birds 
do prefer eating a lot of fruit and they will go through fruit pretty frequently. But aside from that, they're not gonna be too crazy and they're a relatively affordable parrot to own. Now to round up the score, we're gonna get a final score of 2.7 out of five. They are overall a very solid bird to get, in my opinion. I mean, they tick off most boxes. The only issue, in my opinion, is just gonna be that skittish nature to them. So that's where I wouldn't necessarily say this bird is a beginner bird. While everything else is pretty easy to care for, it's just that time commitment that unfortunately a lot of beginners aren't just willing to put. And beginners also generally tend to feel very discouraged when handling a skittish bird. But if you are are willing to put in the time there are very easy birds to upkeep and that's gonna make them really fun pets and to me that's where I think Rosellas are actually kind of a sleeper in the bird world too many people dismiss them as an aviary bird and I think that they're just one of the coolest parrots to own and to show off you go in public with these birds and people are gonna be like whoa what is that they're gonna be really cool conversation starters so with that that about sums up this review guys if you find this valuable please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time